this time I'd like to bring the draining board meeting to order with the approval of the May 13th minutes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the May 13th meeting. Second. Motion made and seconded all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Surveyor's report. Uh, in front of you, you see the payment to contractors. There's uh, probably about a dozen of them. Anybody have any concerns about the payment to the contractors? If not. I think great report, Surveyor. John Law does the help with Motion made and seconded to accept Exhibit A. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. That's all I have right now, Mr. President. Nespa Johnny Ditch Reconstruction. Good morning. Jared Huss, Lawson Fisher Associates, 525 West Washington Avenue, South Bend, Indiana, 46601. So, uh, President Schlereb, I didn't know what sequence you wanted to take these in. Um, good morning. Good morning, Bobby. <laughs> Did, didn't know if you guys had a, a certain uh, sequence you'd like to do this in. I have a suggested sequence, but... If you guys would like to take the contract to C&E and, &E and notice to proceed first, if that's all right. Uh, that's the memorandum of understanding is the oh, first one. Deal, okay. Well, memorandum of understanding in front of you is a modification to the uh, initial memorandum of understanding between the Redevelopment Commission and yourselves related to the reconstruction of the Nesbajani Ditch. Uh, this modification allows for an additional a portion of the contract, two pieces. One was for design, as additional structure designed as part of that that was not in the original scope. So I have a portion of that additional fee is for that. Um, and then the other portion of the fee would be for construction inspection services for the ditch itself. So that MOU is uh, an update to the amount and the type of work that's being done there. And then I know Bill and Phil are also here that can answer any additional questions that are uh, related to that. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Huss in regards to the memorandum of understanding? This is for additional work or both? Yes, yeah, so the original scope did not uh, conceive an additional structure. So as part of that work, we designed an additional structure across the ditch. So that a portion of that additional fee is for that activity. And then uh, the larger portion of fee is for the construction inspection or, or administration of the contract during construction. The Redevelopment Commission's funding this through us, is that correct? Correct. Is the structure for the entrance for the GM plant? Yes. Yeah, both of those structures are predicate or for serving GM, the GM site. Okay. And John, thank you for uh, pointing that out. This is to, uh, to document the funding uh, from the RDC to the drainage board for these activities. Our attorney, I assume, is okay with this? I'll make a motion we approve the First Amendment to the Memorandum of Understanding with the uh, Development Commission. Second. Yeah. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Jared. Next is the contract amendment number one. So uh, tailing the MOU, uh, if you've approved the interaction between the RDC and yourselves for funding of that particular uh, amendment and so this amendment deals with the additional design for the structure and the construction inspection services uh, mentioned previously. Once again, our, I assume our illustrious attorney has signed off on this. Yeah. I'll make a motion we approve the uh, contract amendment number one. Second. Motion being seconded to accept the uh, amendment number one. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> Next is the contract for C&E on the Nesbitt Johnny Ditch Reconstruction Project. Yes, correct. So as you're aware, uh, last meeting we did uh, award the contract to C&E, so this is just the summation of that process. And so Lawson Fisher, um, well, first the contract itself uh, was reviewed uh, through Phil Garrett, and we have that signed and, and there along with all the other insurances and bonding required by the contract as reviewed by Lawson Fisher Associates. So that's all there prepared and ready to go. They've met all the requirements as previously stated during the award process. Any questions on the contract for C&E excavating? Marcel, you're okay with it? Actually, this one, I didn't, I didn't hear anything from Phil, uh, Mr. Garrett on this one, so I don't know, I haven't looked at it. I assume that uh, Lawson Fisher looked at it and met all the requirements for the bid and we're good to go, but I, this was not in my packet for some reason. Yeah, so the contract itself was a standard form of agreement from the county. I know Phil did review that. Phil, if you had any questions for Phil, I'm sure you can answer that. Then the remainder of the is the contract that we, contract documents set out the uh, components for the contract itself. So that was reviewed and gone through with the drainage board and, and everyone here. So those did not change. So all of that information that was required for the bid was checked by Lawson Fisher. Uh, that was checked in the award letter that you received last time as you awarded and then followed through here. So nothing new, all had been previously reviewed and this is just a matter of semantics on the sign off. All the information was there. Um, so this is the same form that Sky uses for all of his public works contracts. The only change was made is that the drainage board is allowed to terminate subject to if the permitting does not go through. Other than that, it's the same form used by the county. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take responsibility for this one. All right. Based on that, I'll make a motion to approve the contract for C&E. Second. Yeah. Motion been made and seconded <clears throat> to approve the contract. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And then the last one is notice to proceed. Lastly, notice to proceed. Uh, just so everybody's aware, we did have correspondence with both the Army Corps of Engineers and IDEM related to the project, obviously uh, asking the drainage board to uh, issue notice to proceed in advance of having those uh, permits, and both IDEM and Army Corps get granted permission to start the project so long as no disturbance of the existing channel uh, take place, and that activity is not supposed to happen until sp late spring, early summer of 25. So that's next year, so we feel it is uh, reasonable to go ahead and move forward with the project. Anticipate having those permits in hand here before the end of the year. And, and Jerry, Kevin's been updating us every so often with emails. I appreciate that, you know, just uh, for insurance. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I think it's important that we had in writing from IDEM and Army Corps that we could move forward with the project. That was a critical component before we could issue notice to proceed. Thank you. Yep, thank you. So whatever happens with this, I presume the Redevelopment Commission will take care of whatever costs come out of whether there's a permit or not and all that? That's correct, sir. Marcel, you okay with this? Mm -hmm. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the notice to proceed for C&E. Second. Motion made and seconded to uh, approve. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Huck. Yep. That's Thank all, you. That's all I have. Anybody else have anything else for Jerry? No. Get him now. <laughs> <laughs> I won't leave. <laughs> Thank you. Never got any donuts, so I don't think. It, it, yeah. <laughs> I even put a hint into him last week, but he didn't take the hint. 
even got a call Friday about that. <laughs> I want a table. Oh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we have item B, the water and discharge permit. Mr. Law, you want to come in on this one before we bring that up? Or? Is that here? That is not it here. It is not. I can, well, that, I have had a direct conversation, but I don't want to carry his permit, uh, but I can talk to him. Sure. Uh, what you have in front of you is a, is a permit to discharge the Nesbajani ditch that C&E, the contractor on the ditch reconstruction project, has submitted well in advance of when he anticipates doing it. He and I had a conversation and obviously directed him to speak with John Law and, and uh, the county surveyor about the permit process, but in that discussion, uh, this would happen sometime late, begin late August and carry into the uh, two structures are installed, so uh, expect a duration of about a month and a half to two months uh, in order to complete that dewatering process that you have in front of you. So not a long duration dewatering process, um, and uh, yeah, so the rest of it's in the permit. And, and Jared, he's that's coordinating this with IDEM in regards to State Road 2 and Amazon? Yeah, so it wouldn't be a coordination with IDEM so much as it would be a, a <laughs> permit request of the drainage board and then uh, at, as part of his dewatering process to a legal drain. You see this is approximately in August? Mm -hmm. Correct. Is uh, the new system going to be in by then? Where, when you say, yeah. So yeah. they are going to So they'll dis they'll discharge to the existing ditch as it as it were because this activity will take place uh in the summer of this year. So the new construction wouldn't be connected to the new ditch until 2025. So this dewatering permit is going to discharge into the existing Nesbajani. Correct. Basically between State Road 2 and Fillmore Road. Correct. Three million gallons a day, which is equivalent to less than seven CFS. I'm just Brian, concerned Brian, that they mentioned. Hold it, Brian. Why you, if you're going to speak, why don't you come up to the microphone, please? And... Try to kick him off. Yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, that's awful. At the same time, Reed Gravel is going to be placing the pressure on the cable, so um, there will be coordinating that with the dot. What, when is the dewatering that we approved a few months back going on? It was like, uh, I forget how much now, 4,200 a minute? Oh, the 8 million gallons? Yeah. When is that happening, I think, is the question. Yeah, when they yeah we approved the dewatering yeah, no, for the starts. construction well, north of. They're supposed to be doing it now, but I think they're having trouble getting the pipes to the ditch or something. They haven't started. They were going to start as soon as they got the um, right for the property so they could run the pipes to discharge into the ditch. Um, but I haven't been out there for a while because they started building the retention basin and not sort of a pond. I guess. I'm just concerned with so all this dewatering going on at the same time. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That, that, that brings up a question that I had too. If that dewatering has started, which it sounds like it has not. As far as I know, it has not. So my question was, if it did start, is it doing the number of wells or dewatering wells that they 
ask for. Is it doing what they want to do? Is there more water coming in? But we don't know the answer to that if they've not if they've not started dewatering yet. So. My question, my concern is if they ask for, I don't know if it was eight or ten wells, and that doesn't do it because there's so much water there, are they going to come back and ask for more? And then this is all temporary, right? At some point they'll. Right. And I think they already they've already asked for 24 wells. If I remember. In theory, they should start pumping discharge quite a bit, but once the groundwater is down where they can start working, it'll be more of a man, uh, maintenance <coughs> pumping. So. Depend upon weather more than anything at that point. Brian Bailey, 30970 Johnson Road. Nespa Johnny goes right through our farm. Uh, my questions were for the simple reason that when IN Tech did the same thing, they did it right in the middle of planting season. And three million gallons extra on a wet spring, you may as well call it quits. I've had a pump running right now. This has been a not that much of a rain year as far as rainfall, but it's been more rain days than drying days. We've had a drainage pump going since mid-April 24-7, and it's still on as of this moment just to get the crops on the ground. Starting in August and going one and a half to two months is going to put you right into harvest season and rainier weather. Uh, so I'm a little concerned about that. If they can, uh, most of the farmers got their crops in, uh, but quite a few don't south of Highway 2 yet on a Nespajani. Uh, they're still trying to work and dry out some of them wet spots, so I'm not worried about them putting it. I'd like to see them start sooner on this to get done by September if they could. <clears throat> so they're not pumping and adding insult to injury on top of any rainfall this fall and trying to get a crop out of the ground. So that would be my concern about it more than anything. And of course, working with the uh, Amazon or anybody else is going to be firing up pumps and, and doing work. If they can do them in the off seasons, more power to them, have at it. Muck don't freeze in the wintertime, you, you know, bulldoze it all you want. So if they want to pump all winter long, that's fine. If they want to pump in the middle of summer, that's fine. But spring and fall, you're hurting every farmer south of highway too. So that's my two cents worth. Thank you. Randy, do you have any thoughts on that? Do you think that's um, something we should well, think about? I, or? I, I do. I, I know that uh, Lawson Fisher and Jared Huss are going to do a study on the Nespadani. We talked about the restrictions on the Nespadani, one being that uh, Lutsky culvert, just north of the railroad? Yes. In the railroad culvert itself, although that's been improved. It's not as much of an obstruction as that Galupski culvert for holding water back on the Nespajani. With, with the dewatering and the extra, all the development and potential heavy rain, is there any way we can prior, prioritize upsizing that Galupski culvert to handle the water? Yeah, and that could be done any time now once uh, just when he gets his crops in the field there. It wouldn't take long to yeah. install a new culvert there. But like you said, upsides. That, that, to, me, to me, that's the biggest obstruction downstream yes. on the Nespajani is that Galupski culvert. And depending on weather conditions and how much dewatering is going on and extra water going down there, I don't know, just, you know, let the water flow. What do we need to to me, that's a concern. How can we address that concern, I guess? Randy, I appreciate you bringing that up. And um, we will have the hydraulic study hydro, uh, for the ditch uh, prepared. And in fact, we, through uh, the blessing of the drainage board and others, we're, we went ahead and started the survey component of that. So we've started the project in advance um, because we know it's critical. And from a time perspective, uh, through review comments ba made both by the county survey and the county engineer, we have also reduced that time, time frame to get that study done. So we were at closer to 
eight months. We're now down to six months, so that we so we're working diligently on the project. I don't envision that that would all be done. Um, probably as soon as I know, Mr. Bailey's been talking about that culvert for some time. So I know that that's a critical component, and I think that's what we want to do is also look at that in the rail bridge and the combined impact of tailwater into the drainage area. So. I know those are important aspects. I don't know that that timing is going to line up with what the requests are from a um, uh, stormwater or uh, dewatering standpoint. Um, I do know seasonally uh, we anticipate, and I appreciate uh, Mr. Bailey's comments related to crop, um, getting the crops out of the field as well. So, you know, from uh, the ditch reconstruction project standpoint, expect the initial, similar to what John explained to the north, expect that initial uh, rate of discharge to be higher once they draw it down near the two structures, and then it'll be just a maintenance activity. But again, we anticipate that we have an October 31st deadline of having that completed, which means the structure likely needs to be in no later than mid-October in order for them to get all their grading and the rest of it dressed uh, for that to be ready for the contract, for the contract that the county's adhered to. So I think from that perspective, the C&E re remaining dewatering should be within that uh, similar, generally within the constraints, uh, seasonal constraints that Mr. Bailey uh, was concerned about. So certainly sensitive to his comments, and, um, but uh, the C&E request is, is very seasonal and fits within that uh, general time frame. Uh, in terms of the broader, con uh, broader conversation, Without the completed study, it's tough for me to make an assertion. I know you guys are out there in the field, you see it, you live it every day, um, but uh, that's just not something that I can, I can speak to at this point until we get further movement on that, on that ditch study. And, and again, it, 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 not in an attempt to uh, say anything negative, but it, related to the overall uh, capacity of the ditch, uh, you know, when we're looking at over 575 CFS for the 100-year flow, you know, I'm sensitive to smaller amounts of water being added, certainly, because that can make an impact. Um, but this is fairly small in comparison to the overall capacity of the ditch and the flow events that it does see. Would that be putting in this new culvert, would that uh, cost be under the redevelopment? I think... I think we need to get the actual determination of what the study says. So it could very well be that everybody's assumption is correct, that we need to replace that culvert. And I think we need to then have that conversation once that study reveals that output, like that is something that we need to do. But I think until we do that, I don't, I would be cautious advising spending dollars on something that we haven't completed yet related to a study and the impact. Randy said it's pretty much at its maximum now, you know. Yeah, Tom, you're talking about the culvert downstream just north the of the one river. That you said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. What's before us is the structure yes. north yeah. of State Road Two for the entrance. But yeah. Yep. It sort of all ties together. We kind of. It does. Bounced around here a little bit. Yeah. But even if that was somehow authorized by somebody today, is there any? Would that even be in by September, October? Is it even possible, or is it we need permitting and everything else that's going to? Yeah, there's a, there's a number. Of, John, I have not looked into that, so there's a number of things that I haven't assessed individually. So um, I don't know if that would be considered a maintenance activity or if we would be considered something else. Again, I want to wait to answer that. I just have not anticipated having a conversation on culvert replacement. I do believe that there obviously needs to be additional information collected to make the right decision on the size of that culvert. Um, and so I don't want to make a, a flippant comment on that without having more information or data to, to state it. Um, again, trying to be aware of the seasonality of, of what Mr. Bailey referred to. Uh, I do think CNE's activities are within that general window. Um, and so I, this is part of the reason we asked them to submit early because we knew this was an ongoing conversation broader than just their discharge. Is there anything in our permit that gives us the uh, ability or the right to ask them to slow down or stop pumping if we have a flooding condition? 
Now, this is kind of an interesting thing. If we get the, if we don't think the drain can handle the discharge, we cannot issue the permit. We can upgrade the drain and then issue the permit. Um, this process is a little bit backwards because they're asking us to issue the permit to do the water and then do the study. And if the drain can't handle it, I don't know where the funding is coming from. I mean, I was here last time we put a new culvert through the railroad tracks and that was a monumental task working with the railroad. Um, so I don't know if redevelopment would set some money aside, essentially put a put an escrow or, or a fund for, for upgrading these culverts. I mean, the truth of the matter is based, I mean, anybody who's been on this board and most of you have even longer than I have, know that there have been issues with that particular area backing up for decades. Um, so I don't see how this much dewatering isn't gonna require some work. Um, I mean, that's yet to be seen, that's what Jared will tell us, but, uh, you know, obviously we want the work to go forward, obviously we wanna issue the permit, but if we could get some money set aside for upgrading those culverts, that would be good. So just a couple of things, and Marcel, I appreciate that. So oh, I want to separate out two different pieces, right? So we have long-term improvements to Nesbajani, which impacts floodplains and floodways. And really, that's what the study is looking at. So it's not assessing dewatering of volumes. It's assessing the overall um, capacity of the Nesbajani ditch. Now, understand that those are correlated. Obviously, we have some, and that's probably brought up the design storms or the storms that we've seen, and that's part of what we'll do through the study proce process is to look at the, the various storms, and we'll look at specific storms and want to talk to the farmers who work those fields to understand what those impacts are going to be, right? So that here's a storm, here's what we've modeled, does that match what you saw, let's say, in 2018, for instance, as an example? Um, that is very much about floodways and floodplains and the hydraulic capacity. Dewatering in this particular instance, the amounts that we're asking, even though when we summate them and at a daily level, eight million and three million seems substantial, and I don't want to minimize that amount of water. But in terms of CFS, they're a fractional component of what the overall ditch conveys. I think what, what we're talking about is the concern that if we have a large rain event, let's say a 50 year storm or greater, and you combine that with the dewatering activities, I think that would be the concern um, and I don't want to speak for Mr. Bailey, but that would be, I think, the, the thing to pay attention to. A large rain in, a, in addition to those activities, that's the impact where they combine. What we're asking for is a dewatering permit that is small in fraction comparatively to the overall drainage course or the discharge to that ditch. So correlated, I don't want to say that they're not because they absolutely are, but the, that's the difference. I want to differentiate between those two as we're discussing it. So improvements made for the functionality of the ditch, replacing all the culverts, those things should be done. I think we've all agreed in an educated and, and processed manner looking at what it is, what those impacts are, and then making sure that we spend the right dollars to do it. Um, doing those in advance of drain it or, of dis, or dewatering discharges is likely not feasible. Um, and, and I just don't see that as a course of action from timing to satisfy the construction needs. So that's just my uh, this information to be considered. And, and thank you for clarifying that because I was gonna to get to that point. Right now we're talking just the, the, the watering permit, but once we get done with that, then you might wanna give a brief synopsis to the board, Jarrett, on what we're talking about in regards to that study because that's been a two or three month process to get to that point you know, what Sky Meters and County Engineer and his input and Bill's input and yours. I don't know if the board's really all up to speed on the study that John Law and I kind of initiated maybe three months ago or four months ago. And with the help of everybody, we've got the Kankakee Yellow River Basin Commission involved in this and they're also funding part of this uh, thanks to everyone's help, and then uh, thanks to redevelopment. I believe, Bill, you're on board with, with that study also, which we need not just from everything north of two, we wanted to look at everything that's going south of two also to the Kankakee, and that's what this study's gonna do. And Jared, you can fill the board in, but let's get through the, the watering part of this permit first. You know? Sure. Yeah. 
just to comment, I've had discussion with Jared about the study. It would be extremely nice had the study been done prior to these dewatering permits coming before us. I think it would shed light on how the ditch, how the Nesbajani can, can handle it. Although I I feel confident Jared is has a, a good handle on what the ditch can handle as it is. And the dewatering permit before us here for the north side of the two with the C and E that relates to at what's presented to us today, like two thousand gallons a minute being pumped in there. So I farmer side of me says when we're irrigating or drawing water out of the ditch and we've got several where we pump seven eight nine hundred gallons a minute you look at the water before before the suction or downstream you don't see that significant difference so two thousand gallons a minute flowing down the nest for Johnny you will it even raise it a fraction of an inch you know you wouldn't under normal circumstances, you wouldn't see a, a raise in the water level. Now, if we have a heavy rain event and more water coming in, plus the discharge, then that's a concern. But, you know, I don't know how to handle that if they would. Is there any way to make these permits subject to if the, if the whatever the receiving water is uh, reaches its flood stage, that dewatering pumping? Pumping needs to be cut back to whatever, 25% of its. Uh, well, you, can, you can put that in the motion for your, make that's what, what we approve. Is I don't know, I'm not familiar enough with the construction activities to know what that would do, if that's even possible for them. So, and I, again, I'm not going to speak for the contractor, but I will tell you in general, um, anticipate dewatering activities to, at the volumes requested to be at its peak at the beginning to draw down the groundwater and then at a much lower rate to maintain that groundwater level. So if they were restricted to the point where they couldn't dewater or it was such a minimal amount, then it would impact the ability of the contractor to complete their job. So in this particular instance, uh, the dewatering predominantly is for the establishment of footings um, below the, the ground in order to place the structures, the three-sided structures on. So anticipate that that beginning activity and dewatering amount is going to be pertinent to the construction of those foundations. So that constraint or timeline is less than the full duration, um, but it would impact uh, very generally the ability for the contractor to do their work. Yeah, but my question is when they've started putting those footing footers in, can they throttle down the dewatering or is there a, a period of time where they have to make sure that it's dry while those set? Yeah, so again, I'm, I don't want to speak to means and methods of the contractor, but in general, what I've seen in other projects of similar nature is that they would dewater in advance, allow them to get a dry uh, area to work in, complete compaction, set stone, and then form, and then need at least, probably at least seven days for forms to set. I'm, I'm guessing they might use early set, but I don't know that for sure. So yes, it would be front-ended, on, on the activity, kind of similar to where, the, where you expect additional drawdown to happen. I know, jumping around here, but I know Lawson Fisher's not involved. At least I don't think they are, but the new structure under State Road 2, Reith Riley in the state of Indiana, mm -hmm. if, if C&E is needing to do dewatering to put this structure in north, going to need to be coming to us and dewatering permit at State Road 2 for that structure? I would assume, but I don't know that for sure. And they yeah, may have already kind of they may have already asked for it. Uh, typically on in-dot projects like that, they may have come in advance. But if it's the responsibility of the contractor, and the contractor will come to the county drainage board to ask for that. So I'm not aware of its yeah, status. Potentially another one. And anyway, so one that we're gonna, you know. John answered your question. I mean, I, I think we could, but the practical aspect of the construction, I mean, if they're in the middle of that, or they're about ready to set and then they can't, it starts to get wet again, I think it would 
reset the process to some some extent. So I don't know, without actually talking to the contractor and saying what the impact would be, I don't know if we can say, hey, look, you guys, we got to shut down your permit because it might just, like I said, cause a snowball effect and delay it further. Yeah, I understand that, but is that really, um, you know, our job is to make sure that ditches are working to the best of their ability in the fields drain. It is, like, yeah, and, and like I said, our, our job is to make sure the ditch can handle it and then issue the permit accordingly. And I don't know if it can or not. Uh, I'm not terribly comfortable making a motion to restrict the flows during a certain period because that seems kind of arbitrary at this point, but it seems like a policy similar to that going forward would be a good idea for our, for our board. And, and Jared, you're, are you under contract with C&E or no? No. Yeah, and you're, you're doing the best you can to try and to answer the question, but we really need the contractor here to say yes or no, I'm, I'm going to do that or not do that. It, you know, it, it, Bobby, if I may, I think the questions that you're asking are likely to be outside of the contract. So I know what yeah. the contract documents say. I know the time frame at which they're going to have to execute that work, which is basically at end of August through uh, the midpoint of October. So we know that's the duration. Um, I don't know that the contractors may be able to tell you specifically what that, what the varying rates might be other than to give you a general uh, input on that. So what the drainage board sounds like they're re responding to or discussing is a broader impact to the ditch with the multiple dewatering activities. Um, I think what I'm trying to indicate here is that um, we do have a dewatering permit that's in front of you for a seasonal time frame, which may make it easier for that particular activity to happen because it's a short duration, um, less impactful to the downstream farmers than a long duration dewatering activity. So um, I think the, I'm sure Thad would be uh, that would be happy to come and discuss the permit with you, but the detail that, that you're discussing as likely outside of the contractor's specific request. Also, uh, not to jump ahead, but are we not going to have the same conversation on our next item, which is with Kimberly Horn dewatering, temporary de construction dewatering? Yeah, that's it. That's well, yeah, I think that's going to be a little bit different conversation, depending on what's where they're going to discharge into, which ditch as to how that water's. Absolutely. Is it going to flow to the Nespajani or is it going to flow to the county line? Right. And there's issues, concerns there. <coughs> um, but to this permit, I'd like to comment that The work of the Kankakee River Basin Commission through the years on the Kankakee River, the work of our drainage board and the contractors that we've had on the Nespajani to do the maintenance, and I believe most of it's been Bailey's excavating. What I've noticed with the maintenance that's been done on these two uh, major, major uh, systems when we do have a heavy rain event, the water, yes, it comes up, but I've noticed that it goes down much quicker now than it has 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Ever since that second pipe was put under the railroad. Yes. That it, it does drop quicker. Yes. Uh, we have flooding events even when we get no rain because Newport Lyle got a deluge and it comes down to us. But it goes away quicker, but a lot of crop, yeah. a lot of crop. But yeah. This particular thing you're talking about here, I would say the sooner they could expedite that, the better. If they could be done with their foot, and it shouldn't take 30 days for footers. If they could start August 1st or even sooner and be done before the second week of September, in the muck ground, you're probably not harvesting until the third week of September. So at least we'd have a, a week to start the, dr the drying out process beyond that, but if you start pushing in through September and into October, I've seen plenty of snow events in November 1st. Uh, I could tell you horror stories about that. So no farmer wants to be out there with snow on the ground. Uh, so try to work within that means if you can. Yeah, Pump it up, whatever. And to Mr. Bailey's point, uh, 
we recognize the critical path to these projects were the structures themselves and uh, procuring those structures. Thus, the we asked the contractor in advance of actually having a written uh, and approved a contract, which you did today, upon award, they started their coordination and shot drawing process to procure those structures. So to Mr. Bailey's point, we recognize that as the critical path. So uh, I think we'd be willing to allow the contractor, once he, re once he receives those structures or knows that those are coming, to start his dewatering process as soon as possible in order to do that. We do anticipate a three-month time frame for the precast manufacturer to, to make and deliver uh, those uh, structures. So that's why we front-ended that process. A little bit unusual to do that, but we recognize that as a critical path. So we are working to that end to try to get that in the ground as quickly as possible. Um, and maybe as part of this procedure, we come back and, and update the drainage board uh, process-wise so that Mr. Bailey and others can be aware of where that's at so there's some understanding of timing that goes along with that. And Lawson Fisher will be on the site doing construction inspection, be happy to provide those reports um, and then come back here and give that verbal report if need be. Sky, I see you sitting out there. Do you have any comments on this particular permit, Sky? Mm -hmm. Sky Metters, Department of Infrastructure Planning and Growth, offices on the 7th and 11th floor of the County City Building. Um, I think the, the main thing, it's important to uh, um, coordinate with the contractor and you know, try to make sure that they are um, doing things outside the planning and harvest season or, or limiting their discharges. And you know, a, lo a lot of this, I mean, we don't know when it's going to rain. Um, that's that's the issue. So it could not be a problem, but it could be a big problem. Um, I think you know when you look in the big scheme of things, relative to the what the ditch can handle, these amounts seem small. But talking with Mr. Bailey a minute ago, down once you get further downstream, a little bit makes a big impact. And I think too, just talking to Mr. Bailey that. There may be some things that we can look at to potentially do something with that structure north of two to make things a little better, but it, it might not be the ultimate solution. Um, you know, just talking with Mr. Bailey a minute ago, there may be some things that we can do to lower that structure in the interim um, and uh, get some more um, um, Relief, relief down there, and then that knowing that's not the long-term solution to to what needs to be done, and then the modeling can be done to say that. Did, did I misinterpret any of that, Mr. Bailey? I think that's. Well, yeah, you said north of two, and it's north of the. North, of, I'm sorry, north of the railroad. Yeah, yeah. north of the railroad. So, what yeah. Yeah. And it is chock full of seaweed and sandbars. So as you push that water downstream from north of Highway 2, you're going to be permeating that ground worse than it already is. So that might be an alleviation too, is to clean that section through there, through the Amazon property, the Nespajani Ditch, which would give you more freeboard because it's going to lower the water table in that whole 640 mm -hmm. acres a foot. And that's a foot more. Your pumping will never add a foot of water to that. Day. Right. Yeah. And so, so that would be an improvement right there. Now, granted, it's going to get down to me quicker, but if we do something with that pipe uh, north of the railroad track there, where it can just pass on, then I think we got I think we got the whole problem. Yeah. So I think there's some things that that we can talk about, but I think uh, uh, I think as far as the permitting side of things for the dewatering, I, I, I think you need to make sure that you include something in there that allows you to make them shut it down if there are issues. I mean, and you can sort of, uh, you don't want those issues to be tied necessarily to flood a certain flood condition. 
because it may not be a 100-year storm where you start to see the issues. Um, so I think with the permit, you want to really give yourself a way that you have the authority to go in and ask them to either lower the discharge or shut the discharge off completely. And I know uh, that, will, that will impact the uh, construction, but, you know, looking at the ditch side of things and, you know, what it's really intended for, uh, I think giving yourself that out is, is a good idea. Um, and also, too, you know, when we're talking CFS, you, you hear these numbers like 2,400 gallons per minute. 2,400 are, you hear so many million gallons per day. Um, and and it, it seems like a lot, but when you put it in the overall scheme of what the ditch can convey, it's actually very small. Um, like the 4,200, I think, uh, gallons per minute or whatever was around 10, seven to 10 cubic feet per second, and the ditch can handle four to 500 cubic feet per second. So, you know, those are other things to think about. I don't know if I helped or clouded the water. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention, uh, you brought up next on the agenda that uh, um, Kimley Horn was gonna be here to speak about dewatering. I don't think they're ready for dewatering. I think they're here to speak more about what the second item got on there, yeah. That's just, just based on emails I got from them. So anyway, any questions for me? No, thank you, appreciate it. But at least I don't. Just, I, I agree with Sky 100%, I really like that approach. And I also agree this is probably has like zero of impact, very little, it's a small. But I would like to see a policy in place so that when the ditch can't handle it, the, the drainage board has the right to say, hey, scale that back at least to 10% or whatever the number is, you know, main, keep it pumping and maintain it, but just cut it off for the next, until the ditch comes down. So I don't know if, if we can table this and maybe have a policy by next month. Well, I, I mean, it'll be permit by permit, ditch by ditch. I, I mean, I think you can make a motion that says you approve it, um, you know, subject to the county surveyor being able to restrict or shut down the dewatering uh, based on flood levels downstream or water levels downstream. Okay, I'll make that motion. Yeah. I'll second that. Motion and a second. Yeah. Would you <coughs> clarify that for the secretary? Would, Would you clarify that for yeah. the secretary, <coughs> Mr. Attorney? What? My motion is to uh, approve this um, dewatering discharge permit subject to the uh, surveyor having the authority to uh, restrict or eliminate dewatering de flows. Uh, based on the water level downstream. Based the on the water down. levels uh, downstream of the discharge. Under that, that permit you're talking about, under these inspector comments, I did, I did basically state that um, they may be able, they may be asked to stop pumping the clean fall amount um, exceed ditch capacity. Okay, that's in these little teeny so words somewhere. I, it is, I guess, part of the inspection comments. I don't know if that makes that legal binding or not. Okay, well, either way, my motion stands. My second stands. <clears throat> motion, motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you all for your input. So under so under five, the temporary construction dewatering permit. John, you want to comment on on five A? Should have stayed there, Sky. <laughs> Kim was born. Are we doing? I'm so confused with you guys. Are we doing the dewatering, or are we just doing the pipes? Well, I think they're here just for pipes. I'm yep. just, yeah. So I guess. Yep. You uh, want to? Didn't you want to talk about the temporary construction of the dewatering for them? Did you want to comment on that or no? I don't remember talking about anything specific on this, that. 
didn't you have something that you talked to us prior to the meeting? Oh, that was on something different. Okay, all right. That was Judy Creek. Okay. okay. So is dewatering coming later for Kimberly Horn? Yeah, I, I would imagine so. I don't think yeah, he's going to be yeah. involved with it. That'll be the contractor. Yeah. Right. So we're just doing the, the engineering for the He's from Kimberly Horn, but he doesn't handle the design. Got it. Okay. Move on. Move on to B. Permanent outlet and retent for the retention ponds. Hi, good morning. Andy Taylor with Kim Horner and Associates. We have an office at 500 East 96th Street, uh, Suite 300, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46240. Um, here this morning to uh, discuss the application for the permanent outlet for the, the detention basins that we've designed on site. Uh, the site's located at the, the southwest corner, State Road 2 in Strawberry. Um, I, I believe you should have received kind of a, an abbreviated uh, version of our, uh, our original drainage report. Uh, it should have had uh, an exhibit in it that outlined uh, the, the proposed discharges and uh, showed the, the proposed uh, detention designs. Um, the request is for two 30-inch uh, RCP outlets to the ditch, uh, to the Nesbajani ditch, ditch um, there at the southeast corner of the site. Um, it's, it outlets roughly uh, where, the, where the ditch parallels Strawberry. Um, I think uh, overall, you know, based on the county standards, uh, uh, the site is allowed uh, roughly 65 CFS as an allowable discharge. Um, we're, we're providing a, a roughly a 25% reduction and that uh, discharge, so the proposed um, calculations show a, a roughly about 48 CFS uh, discharge from that 225 acres. Um, there's, there's four uh, interconnected basins on site, uh, providing roughly about 100, a little over 100 acre feet of storage uh, for stormwater. And the tailwater effects of the Nespajani was taken into account uh, during the design uh, so that if that's at flood stage, uh, we have the available storage on site. So once that flood stage goes down, it will release. Uh, we're also putting in a backflow preventer on our uh, outlet so that that water stays on site and isn't discharging once the head or the, the tail water is, is uh, at flood stage. So uh, happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, let me know if there's anything else. Anybody have any questions on the two 30 inches outlets going to the Nespajani? I'm not terribly comfortable with two 30 inch shotgun barrels going into a ditch that's already, you know, as we've talked, struggling. Um, I've read most of your report and I agree that you, what you're proposing um, probably won't have a negative impact to the, to the ditch and the drainage. Um, but as you've heard, you know, the, the receiving stream just isn't in great condition um, and we've got some work to do on it. Um, also, just the two 30 inch pipes to me, that's just more that we have to maintain and address long term. Um, and then just a little bit concerned about erosion, although your, the velocities look reasonable, mm -hmm. but even still just, you know, trying to anticipate the worst, worst case. Um, I don't know if there's a way to and then with backflow preventers, you know, if you have two of them, one of them's probably gonna fail at some point. So if we could restrict that to one, uh, I'd feel more comfortable with that, but I don't know if that's possible or. Yeah, I think, um, I think we can take a look at the calculations and see, you know, if, if one 30 inch outlet will have major impacts. Um, I think, you know, we, we we had planned for back-to-back 100-year -back storms, basically. Um, and we were trying to meet the county's requirements as far as four feet maximum staging in the ponds. Uh, so that kind of hand ties us a little bit. Um, so if, if maybe we're able to uh, stack a little bit more on the ponds, we could, we could reduce the discharge um, so that, you know, we're we're getting closer to you know one one outlet point to maybe address some of those concerns. Uh, I think the the four foot stacking really does kind of um, put us a little bit at a, at a disadvantage to try to solve that 
that concern. Um, you know, we'd, I think we would we would provide whatever uh, calculations you, you would need to feel comfortable with exceeding that four foot stacking. Um, if if you if you need it, you know, need us to. Um, so I, I understand the concerns. Obviously, we've had a lot of discussion this morning about the the Nesbajani. Um So I, I think it's it's something that we can look at and and try to try to address. Okay, thank you. I would be interested in Sky's comments yep. at some point on the four foot. Thank you. That's um, you know, there's situations where that seems really important, and there's other situations where maybe not. Just wondered your thoughts on this particular one. Okay. Um, Sky Matters again. Uh, We've done a, a very thorough review in my office of, of their plan, and it, it's a very good drainage plan, given the site that they have and so forth. Um, I'm pretty sure that this, uh, the site's going to be fenced. Yes. So we can, we can work with them on uh, allowing uh, greater than four-foot depth in that pond, four-foot um, stacking, or however you say it, in that pond and on some other items, because they did plan for back-to-back 100-year -back storms, which, which uh, and with that, they didn't account for a lot of the storage they have in the drainage swales that will be storing water going to the pond. So, so it's, it's a very good uh, drainage design, but you know, I, I, I think too with the, and it does meet the criteria. However, I believe, I, I, I think the, you know, the two outlets is, is you know, even from just a perception standpoint itself could cause some issues. So if there's a way that we can um, look at going with one outlet and then they could work with our office to get the numbers to work from our standpoint and still, you know, retain on site what needs to be retained and making sure that there's definitely, in this case, there's definitely going to be less going into the ditch than the current existing condition with the one pipe so I, I think we can work on the, the depth of the pond and, and everything and so those are my thoughts Randy or anybody else have so we're now down to one thirty inch pipe or two those that's I'm just throwing out my concerns so yeah uh, no I, and I'm, uh, I'm following or uh, if understanding yeah. if I, Randy I think what he's saying is that the request stands for two you can approve one they can work with Sky's office to make sure that works for them if the one pipe won't work they can come back and request the second one again and that'll be up to you but if you guys are comfortable approving one you can approve one and maybe that'll work I think we could make it work we'll we'll do what we can to cause the least amount of pain possible with them having to do some redesign and, and like I said it, it, it's a the design that's there now does go above and beyond as far as storage on site. Um, it's just right now the release, I think, that everyone's concerned about. And you change that, you change everything upstream. But I think that with the design that they have and allowing some other items like uh, you know, deeper pond and so forth, I think, you know, I don't want to speak for Kinley Horn, but based on what I've done in the past, I think we can get it to, to work. I think, <clears throat> I think what you said about the regulation of the outlet of your pond would you could even control that a little bit <coughs> that, 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 that 30 inch pot a 30 inch pipe would definitely work instead of two i think it's yeah i mean i we'll have to rerun the calculations um it, it'll definitely reduce uh the discharge from the ponds themselves yeah. pretty drastically i would i would assume that it's going to be roughly half. <laughs> um, I mean, those pipes are pretty flat. Uh, so what, what's happening is it's the amount of head that has to build up. You're not getting much discharge out of those pipes. Um, so uh, I think we can, we can take a look at it. And like, like Sky mentioned, if, if, if we're able to relax that stacking requirement, we, we should be able to get something to work. Um, so I, obviously, we just want to make sure everybody's comfortable. Thank you. The elevation of the pipes where they discharge into the Nespajani related to the current average water level, are they a foot above? Two well, foot so above? we're one, I think it's 1.75 feet above the flow line. So the actual flow line of the ditch. Um, I think that puts us right about the actual water level in the ditch um, as far as what we can tell. Where would they be dumping this in at? 
right here, Gordon. Okay. Right, right where the right. Mr. Johnny makes the, Curve. the angle across. Where it cuts away right, from right the where it hits strawberry, strawberry road. Yeah. And the ponds would be in that triangle field then? Uh, it would be in the, it'd be on the west the side. Body yeah, on the main body. So it'd be on the west side of the ditch. Brian, would you come up and speak at the, your questions? You should just sit right next to Dan. Now you got that long trip there. <laughs> Jesus. I need some exercise. <laughs> oh, I was just thinking, uh, you know, knowing the ditch, cleaning the ditch, and where some of the KV spots are in a ditch, I was a little concerned about where they'll be bringing them in. Um, if they're coming from the west, uh, south of the curve there. Yeah. Brian, it'd be between the curve and where the pipeline, gas line, oil line goes through, east, west across the property. So they're going to be north of that gas line? Yes. North of the gas so line. This is, oh. Well, they're put, they said they're putting them up high enough that they, it wouldn't affect that then. Um, that's not too bad of an area, but there's you're going to have to put a, some sort of deflection structure there. So when that water it, it just it aims it down the ditch. Yeah. If if that comes across that stream, it's gonna it's gonna Strawberry Road will disappear. Yeah. We we've got the outlet angled. Well, even to... even angled's kind of tough in that. We've we've tried that too. Yeah. Uh, the the soil types down in that ditch are are just tough to work with. Yeah. Um, a deeper retention pond. You dig deeper anywhere out there, all you got is a, a pond. It's already going to have water in it. So deeper doesn't give you more capacity. Uh, and that's the bad thing about working in shallow ground is the fact that the only way you get more gallons is bigger diameter. Can you add an extra pond? Do you have the so what, the acreage to do that? It wouldn't necessarily, it would be deeper as far as the, the normal water level it would stay the same. We would basically effectively be building up a berm. If you're building the berm up, you're higher than the ditch banks. That you're not gaining nothing. The ditch would be out of its banks. So the, I don't know. I haven't looked yeah, at your yeah. elevations or anything, but I'm just saying, yeah, berming up a, a, a pond out there higher than the ground, the ground is lower than the banks of the ditch. You might gain a little bit. So, and we, we would plan to put a pond liner in, so it wouldn't be necessarily dispersing through the soil. So it, it's going to be a closed system. So... The normal water level is where the water is going to sit all the time right. based on our outlet elevation. And what we're doing, the, the available storage... Freeboard. Yeah, is, is above that, and we would just be building up the banks higher to allow that storage to be So they realized. can slow down the release, and then right. just start here. Well, I realize that, but boy, when you say you're, you're building up higher than ground level out in muck ground, you're, you're really not gaining anything. Uh, you're, you're already out of the bank somewhere on that ditch. Uh, so, I don't know if you can actually call that storage or not. Uh, it's something that had to be looked at. Now, if you're, uh, you, if you're putting a liner in, if there's no perk, then where's the water right. going? It's all going to be it's through the pipe. pipe. <sighs> Good luck with that. Buddy. I wasn't aware of the liner. Is there a purpose for that? Well, basically, because we didn't want we didn't want the uh, the groundwater to be continually discharging through our system. So, you know, it, we were trying to be smart about it, um, you know, not, not knowing how, how the groundwater would react once construction is complete. We didn't want the, the groundwater just to be flowing through the pond and then just straight out the outlet. So this would purely be whatever rainfall falls on our site would go to the pond and it, it wouldn't necessarily be impacted by any kind of groundwater flow. So you're going to you're going to seal the bottom of these retention basins to keep the groundwater from coming up into them. Yes. As much to Bailey says, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> that's, at least that's the thought. Um, Is there a problem with them not being? I wise? just think there's so much water in that area to deal with. I mean, the irrigation wells you can just put one in anywhere you want, and twenty to. 30 feet, you got all kinds of water. I mean, just from our standpoint or the standpoint of the ditches, is there a problem with them not lining them and letting there be? I, I just think it's going to blow apart because of the groundwater pressure will just I push up. It. I agree, but besides that, is do we, it seems to me it might be better to not line them. 
keeps kind of the ground better water. to not lie. Five dollars too. Yeah. yeah. These wire up. But I. He's got more evaporation effect too. We I mean, we can consider that. I guess we were we were trying to <laughs> trying to not uh, not provide a, a straight conduit. I guess for the groundwater to get to the ditch, but. I don't think we care about that because that's what the ditches are there for and they're draining the fields with mm. field tile and so forth. So that's up to you, I guess, I guess to whatever you think's best for the project. We're not gonna add any more water to the ditch than what's currently yeah. as farm ground. Like, right. You know. Keep it simple. <laughs> Keep in mind though, the permit request was for the pipes discharging the ditch, so. Well, I'll make a motion for the one and then Sky and they can monitor if two is needed. I'll second that. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. If Thank you, you all. If you with that, let us know. <laughs> Appreciate your consideration. John, is this a, in addition to Thank the, you, Andy. Yeah. What? Oh, yeah. Um, this is an addition real quick. Basically, he's coming to the drainage board today to ask um, that site is on 933 just south of the toll road. On the west side, there, there used to be a big hotel right there. Correct. And right now it's just a big lot of concrete. Um, he's got a developer, they're going to develop it. Um, you can see his plan there in front of you. And what they're doing is asking for the easement reduction from 75 feet down to um, 35 so a 40 foot is easement reduction but in there everything's concrete anyway um, I guess I would maybe bring up in, in that the, the plants in the they don't have I don't see where there's really access for the county to get in and use that along the ditch so if they could provide access for us along Judah Creek if we ever need to get to it that 35 feet's not going to make a difference because all concrete up to the bank anyway. And it's just kind of cleaning that site up because, uh, you know, there were structures before were well within 75 feet of the ditch and they never had any firm uh, you know, never reduced the easement or anything when they built those. Well, those are gone now. They want to build some new ones and they just want to clean that up with the easement down to 35 feet. Is there a precedent for reducing to 35 feet in this kind of area of Judy Creek? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Long Creek Road and uh, Main Street, some of those projects, uh, especially along College Avenue where Granger Community Church, that ditch um, flows through by was it, Sam's Club, whatever. Yeah, they reduced that down to 35 feet from there, so there is precedent. Will it be concrete or natural turf? grass along there when it's done? You want me to address that? Yeah, yeah, Terry yeah. Lang from the yeah. Whiteman office. Our address is 1402 Mishwaka Avenue here in South Bend. Uh, to give you a little history, this used to be the old Holiday Insight. Um, the Gipper Lounge was uh, located closer to the uh, highway there uh, to the uh, east. Um, the original building was 10 feet away from the top of the bank um, at the closest point and the area along the, the uh, Judy Creek right there had been maintained as a yard area. Um, the owner of the property who previously owned the hotels has tore down all the buildings um, in anticipation of putting newer buildings up, newer restaurant on the site also. What they're looking to do is to uh, be able to create an area along Judy Creek for the restaurant to be able to have outdoor seating, um, have it as a nice landscaped area the way it used to be when the swimming pool was located on the uh, north side of Judy Creek with the bridge going across to that side would make a, a nice recreational area right along the creek right there. Uh, the buildings being uh, proposed right now would be 35 feet away from the bank so we're basically 25 feet farther away when, from where the original buildings were located right there. With the new buildings being done we will also be doing controlled drainage structures inside our site where currently 
it is a flash flood runoff of concrete that drains into Judy Creek. So we'll be able to control what water goes where and there'll be an increase in landscape area around the whole site also, which currently is all hard surface. And, and as John can attest, it, you know, it drains directly down toward the ditch right now currently. So what we're doing is we're going to be adding more landscape area. We're going to be using controlled drainage. And we'd just like to be able to use that area uh, a little closer to the uh, creek right there. Um, they'll be very careful and using erosion controls to make sure that we don't have any problems. You know, we met with the friends of Judy Creek um, and it was a, you know, this is very sensitive area um, in that area with regards to, you know, stormwater runoff and, and erosion into Judy Creek. So we are taking all of that into account and, and the plan actually probably gives more space for uh, erosion to not be into the creek with that uh, being expanded to 35 feet from what is currently the concrete out there which is 10 feet away. So that's the reason we're bef before you and if I try to answer any questions that you may have. T Terry, going back to John's question, there will be access for us to get to to maintain that? The area along the, the roadway right there as you come in along the uh, highway right there along 933 um, you'll be able to access from that along to get to that uh, drainage, what would be the reduced drainage area then? Yes. Thank you. Terry, Terry did bring this uh, along with the developer in front of the Judy Creek Task Force. And, um, talked about it quite a bit. Judy, the Task Force is really happy with what he had planned because it'll be 10, you know, 100 times better than. My, my only concern would be the, in, within that 35 feet that there's nothing put in, or it's put in in such a way, whatever is put in there doesn't impede our maintenance or our access that we might need or want to the. And that, that language I mm -hmm. think is in the permit that we have the right to remove that stuff, but yeah. Well, or they have to keep it out of our way. We don't want to have to go you know, expend money trying to get whatever, a patio or a fence, mm -hmm. a fancy fence out of the way to get access that we might need. So I'll make a motion that we approve a uh, reduction of the easement to 35 feet subject to uh, uh, the county surveyor approving the, the landscape plan uh, for anyth any anything within that area and that it not impede our maintenance, uh, what we think we need for uh, maintaining the ditch and also for an additional access to get, because when you take that down to 35 feet, it's going to make it a little tougher to get off of 933 into that easement. Um, probably don't this need it, but agenda is this item on the agenda? No, it's not sure who we're, who's talking. I don't see this item on the agenda, and you're voting on it. That's the question. Marcel, is that a problem for us? Is that okay? I mean, I guess the question is, was it noticed? You meet the public notification requirements. Is now, that no, directed at me or is that directed at, at John? Whoever would have published. Yeah, I had submitted my application for this over a month ago to John for it to be placed on the agenda. Okay, it wasn't published. It, it didn't make the agenda, so. Then no. Can't, can't move on it? Sorry. 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 We'll take it up next month. Okay. Motion died. Just withdraw it. Withdrawn. Thank you. Privilege of the floor. But it wasn't published. Privilege of the floor. Subject to three minutes. Five minutes, I mean, that was like 30 seconds. <laughs> My name's Sid Schaefer, 16500 Madison Road, South Bend, Indiana. I had a neighboring farmer come to me last fall and asked if he could have permission to go across me to drain his virgin ground, which was wooded at the time, that he cleared that had a wetlands in it. 
And I said, well, if you would, we need to be able to take it all the way to the county ditch. I brought this up with Mr. Slar. I brought it up with Mr. Law. And Mr. Law informed me you can only put one tile on the county easement, even if the person doing it paid for it. And I'm just looking for guidance because since then, this farmer chose, Mr. Martin, chose to come across my land uninvited and tie into my private ditch and also in the process crossed the county tile to get to it. And I'm looking just for guidance as much as anything. I'm ready to write a, lawyer, a letter to him from my lawyer, basically telling him he's no longer allowed on my ground and ask him what he plans on doing about the crop damage, which has already occurred, approximately nine acres and three fields. And I'm like, I don't want to get in a big lawsuit, but I'm just looking for guidance as much as anything and what, because I do not believe that the county drain, the tile there, uh, has enough capacity to handle his additional approximately 60 acres when there's already 240 acres going into it. And I do not know what the slope is, so I, that I cannot calculate um, to know what I should be doing to prevent my ground right now from being underwater. It was underwater yesterday, and it had been planted already two weeks ago. And this was, what, the third day it set underwater from the last rain, which was only, I believe, around an inch and inch and a part. It wasn't very much. And I guess I'm looking at it. I got a guy dumping water on me coming into my private ditch when he should be going into the county tile. And I don't know if the county tile can handle it. And I was told by Tom and John that legally you don't have to get permission to tie into a county drain, unless you're over 10 inches. Yes. You have to get permission if it's, if you're coming in with a 10 inch, you gotta get permission to go in. Correct. County tile. But, but if you're coming in with drain. a six, no big deal. And what size pipe did he put in? He put in a five. He told me originally he was gonna put in an eight. Then he only put in a five, so I'm guessing they figured with the slope he had, because he's probably, I'm gonna say 25, 30 foot above grade. With the slope he had, they figured he had enough head pressure he didn't need a bigger pipe. And he did put in a solid pipe. And when he come across your property and cut existing lines? Correct, he cut like five existing lines I had, where if he would have asked me, I would have sent him along the woods, which was, basically the same elevation, and he would have had clean sailing all the way down to the county ditch. But he hooked them that he cut up to the new tile as he went across. Yeah, the one we put in about five years ago, he cut right through that. And we paid for that, and the county uh, provided the excavating to put it in. But he hooked them up to the new tile that he put across. He hooked what he cut of your tile, he hooked them up to the, his new pipe. His new no, no, he said he repaired them. He didn't hook them. To, his new pipe's only five inches. The county tile there is 12 inches. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, your field system. Is, my I, field system's all messed up now. Yeah, because I had six inch tile in, and he only put a five inch tile in and basically tore out a bunch of mine, but the only way you could repair them, he claims he's got photos, I have yet to see the photos, of the repair that he made, and I think Mr. Matthews and Mr. Slarb here can verify that when you disturb an existing system, it's never the same afterward. I talked with him this morning, called him, and he said that he hooked every one of your tile up to the new pipe that he put in. Well, what would good be a six inch getting tied into a five inch? And he said that your tile were like half full of 
But anyway, he said, you got a better, now this is what he told me, that you've got a better drain now than you had before because your tile were half full anyway. All I know is I was flooding myself out before. <laughs> so I don't know how much better I needed. I mean, you know, this is the other. And I also have a, a riser in the one, which is on a six inch, that will sometimes lay water on too long. And uh, generally, if you got a riser on a six inch and, and the water lays on it too long, it usually keeps them pretty well flushed out. Especially if you're 25 foot above grade, above the you know, low spot in the field. Usually they stay pretty clean. Because I got a, one that's almost flat that's a half mile long that's because of the amount of water that flows through it. It's clean and it's been in since the 40s. So I'm looking for guidance because it's all happening on my property, but it ends up in the county drain. So if it, it, you're talking about a private tile system. Correct. The, the drainage board doesn't regulate private tile systems. But we it goes would, into the county. So where it hits the county, we would, we would regulate that. So we regulate the county tile. Right. But, but what you're complaining about is what, what I want your to know is, tile could the, and his tile, which is a private tile correct. system. We don't, we don't have anything to do with that. So you correct. would have to have your lawyer send No, no, no. I got a question for you, though. Could you determine if the regulated drain is large enough? We could. We, I don't. I don't I have no idea where this is. So, but the surveyor can can determine if the if the drain has enough capacity. But if he's only putting a five inch pipe in, he he's got the right to do that. I mean, if we need to clear out the drain or do something else with the drain, we can. But, but if the drain ain't big enough, well, once again, we we could look at that piece, but that has nothing to do with him cutting your tile or or. or Correct. Across your land, so he may not have the. I mean, he may or may not have the right to do that, right? Because he's crossing. He may not. That's not for us to decide. Is what I'm saying. We've got no. Uh, we're we've got no opinion on that whatsoever. Now, if if you're saying our tile, our drain is not functioning properly, then the surveyor can take a look at that. Um, but that's a separate issue from what your neighbor did uh, on your property. Correct. So I should just. Tell him to cease doing it, and I have we have no no I know for your lawyer. We once again, if you're asking the surveyor to take a look to see if our drain has capacity, that's we, what I'm asking. Okay, we can do that, but that's all we can do. Okay, and if it does not, then we'll address it. All right. Now the other question would be is they're telling, and I guess this is I was reading in some of the state law. As far as drainage law, it did state that every tile that's tied into a regulated tile is supposed to be given to the surveyor to determine if the capacity is capable of being handled. So all of the tile is supposed to be sent to the surveyor's office so it can be cataloged, inventoried, and accounted for. Okay. But once again, he has... The he didn't tie into you. Yeah, he tied he into tied me. He tied into you, and you tied into us. Even still, he should have submitted whatever it is he did to the surveyor's office so it can be cataloged, inventoried, and accounted for. And based on you know what we've got is how the surveyor determines what what that system can handle. Correct. So, but once again, two separate issues, right? We Correct. can take a look to see if we can handle the water that's being discharged from those, I think you said 60 acres. Um, but that's a different issue than what he is or is not doing to your private tile. Correct. That's a, basically all I wanted to find out. And I knew that the private tile was that way. His new private tile drains into your private ditch. Does your private ditch drain into our county tile then? Correct. Okay. How big a tile is that, John? I believe it's a 12 inch tile. Yeah, that's what we put in five years ago, a 12 inch. That goes through awards. Yeah. Yeah. And right now there's 240 going into it, and he just put another 60 into it. So I don't know the slope on it. I, I imagine at a 20 degree slope, which is probably not, it could probably handle the water.
Yeah. I'm not sure how to, I would have thought he should have asked permission to hook into your private ditch. Or. Well, I don't think they did. I think they thought it was the county. He said that he met with you and the landowner and himself in last fall. Now, this is Mr. Martin or Verhege? Verhege. Verhege never met with me. I couldn't tell you what he looked like for the life of me. And said that you weren't in favor of it, but go ahead and do it. No, I never said that. You weren't there, and I understand that. You're just taking my word to his word. But, I mean, if you were a farmer and you, another farmer wanted to drain and you had the ability to avoid your system by going along the woods, not right up in the woods, but like 30 feet out or so, and take it all the way to the county drain, would you have a problem with it if he used a perforated tile? Probably not. But to go across the field and tear up a bunch of drainage and then repair it and then tie into a private ditch, would you have a problem with it? Well, it, it doesn't matter what we would or wouldn't have a problem with. I mean, this isn't, I mean, once again, it, we. Well, I was just talking farmer to farmer. I'm not talking to well, we can to do that business. after. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Thank you for your time. Second. What may say, though, in favor? Aye. Aye. John.